So hi everyone and welcome to our study skills or vision skills webinar. Um, the reason we put this together was because a few students had mentioned to me that they would really like to hear some tips from older years or just from their academic reps on how to go about studying. So it's hosted by the reps and also some older years. Um, yeah. And then the general structure for this session, I don't know who's got the slides, so if they want to flick the slides. So you're going to have talks by three year two students uh, and then a Q&A with a third year. Then we also have a general Q&A and I'll cover a few well-being points for revision and study skills. Okay, so I think our first speaker is Hader. So. Cool. Okay. So, um, hi, my name is Taylor. I'm in second year. Um, yeah, how to study, I guess. Um, I'd say the important things when it's studying is trying to figure out your own way of doing stuff. So each person, and I think you'll hear this, you hear a lot of different ways to study and different ways to approach studying throughout this whole talk. Um, I think it's take what you want from different people and try out different things and piece them together. That's what I did. One of the things I did really early on was I approached some random fifth years at a table and was just like, hey, what year are you guys in? Do you study medicine? How do I revise? How do I study? And they were all like, oh my God, you're adorable. And then like, I got half an hour of free like life coaching from these fifth years. Um, and I heard a lot of really cool stuff. And I think I tried some things and I picked up on some things and I've asked a load of people since then, you know, how do they study? What should I do? And I think it is just a matter of trying out different stuff and seeing what works. So for me personally, I use, uh, I like reading um, in terms of, I, I was never particularly big on note taking, even at A-level. I was never particularly big on flashcard making. Um, and I just kind of struggled with that. I think if you get any flashcards, that's great. That was never my thing. What I tend to do is I will use OneNote to try and make my lecture notes. Um, and what I do is I will go onto the PowerPoint, you click print, you click OneNote, and then you literally just import all of the slides, images into your into OneNote. And then while the lecture is going under each slide, I'll, I'll type in any additional information or explaining information that I think was particularly helpful. Um, and then if there is a word that, for example, I don't understand, then I'll Google the definition, stick that in as well. And that is the extent of my note taking. I think the focus for me is trying to get into her, trying to understand it, trying to become familiar with it. Um, and a couple ways of doing that. The first one is just straight up like, what can I remember? Can I explain this out loud? Can I look away from my notes and start to describe like the pathophysiology of diabetes type one? Um, or can I note it all down? What are the important points? Can I draw a diagram? Then I'd look at my notes, a different coloured pen, go back through the diagram and write down anything I missed and then do it again. Um, that's a great way to get things into your memory. Just test yourself from straight up. Can I say it? Can I draw it? Can I explain it? And then correct yourself and do it again with the corrections kind of thing. Just that kind of trial and error. It's essentially the same process as flashcards, but without having to spend time making flashcards. Um, the second thing I'll, I'll do to try and like help me get information to my head is use different ways of learning it so i don't mean buy loads of textbooks and try and like learn all of medicine i'm more of i use things like osmosis which you guys as imperial students will all have subscriptions to um and they have loads of great short videos that kind of take you through a topic and it's a really good way to keep your memories of certain things fresh so rather than me going through four lectures on type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, treatment and complications, I can watch a 25 minute video on osmosis which takes me through the differences in diagnosis of these different types of diabetes, the different treatments, the, like, the way you go through it and the potential complications and symptoms. And that is really helpful as a refresher. Um, what else do I do to study? Um, I think the other big thing is just your discipline because at the end of the day you just you 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 kind of just have to get through it um and in order to do that you need to kind of 
because because you're not always going to have that motivation there are six years and like cumulatively like a couple hundred weeks of med school you can't expect to have that same buzzing motivation and excitement each and every week so you need to learn to have some sort of control of yourself put you just like just do the work even if you're not like feeling it um and there are a couple apps I've, uh, that people use the one i personally use is called forest um and the forest app essentially all it does is it locks your phone so um this is what it looks like and basically you pick any time between like what i think it goes all the way down to 10 minutes to 120 minutes you press start and then it'll be like your tree is growing if you then close you can lock your phone but if you then unlock your phone and try and open a different app then your tree will die you'll get a pop-up warning for 10 seconds if you don't go back to the app and stop using your phone your tree will die and then you have a dead tree and that's kind of sad um and so it uses some very very low level psychology to make you motivated to stay focused on your task um and I found this really useful because obviously the thing is like everyone ends up going on their phone, you go on a tangent, you get a notification on your phone and you're like, well, half an hour later and, you know, now I'm tired and I'm going to go to sleep. Um, it's kind of like separating yourself from the phone. If, if you're strong enough to just turn off your phone and leave it on the side, do that too. Um, I have a to-do list as well. So each day I'll list the things I want to get through on that day. Um, often that is in addition to... Uh, what's already on the timetable so if i do have a very packed timetable i'd include fewer things on the to-do list um so for example this is my to-do list for this week i've just got each day of the week and then i have different items so these are either i think what have i colored scheme this i've colored this based on topics so like yellow is endocrinology pink is anatomy i think brown is gastroenterology for obvious reasons and I just tick off each thing as I do it and you get the satisfaction of ticking things off which is always nice but also you have an idea of what you're going to get what you're going to try and do and I would usually do this on a Sunday night for the next three days and then when I get to Wednesday do it for the rest of the week um, and then I'll pick up whatever I haven't done on Saturday the reason for this is because you never know what's going to happen a couple of days into the future so planning out your entire week is going to make you sad when you don't get it all done um, and having that empty day means you can understand that some days like yesterday for example I ended up calling a friend and we spoke for like three hours and I literally got nothing. I got half a lecture done um, rather than the five I wanted to. But I know that I have a buffer day on Saturday where I'll just have to pick that up. Um, the other thing to do is have like fun activities. It's kind of like if you get this many things, if you get this stuff done, you can move on to this thing. Um, and I can kind of like, you know, you get to the end of the pile of the work and then you can do something fun. Um, so yeah, I say that one's a good study to have this kind of like organization because it also means you don't then, okay, I should probably do some studying now. What am I going to do? You then spend an hour meaninglessly scrolling through your notes and your like LOs and all of that and not actually learning anything. So planning that in advance, getting that out of the way means that you can just sit down. Okay, I am doing like upper GI disorders this evening once I finish all of these like Zoom calls. Um, the next thing in terms of organization would be knowing what you need to know in the course. So I have a tracker. Um, can I screen share? Could I? Oh, no, you're screen sharing. Okay. Um, can I screen share? Yeah, of course. I can stop my screen share and then you can um, do it from your end. Okay. Uh, hold up. Let me just try and. Yes, that did work. Okay um one second okay you can all see my lovely uh can you see my screen background i can now see the tracker yeah we can see it now okay awesome so what i would do is i'd write down uh the type of session what it is the date the module the tylo and then if i read or attended it um have i made notes on it and how confident am i with it um and essentially just go through the year doing this. This is year one, just for like recognizability. And the good thing about all of these details means that I can order in date order so I know how long ago something was. Uh, the module means that if I'm, if I'm preparing for my POM exam, then I literally just sort sorted by POM. That's the reason for that. So then I have, okay, how am I doing with POM? Great. Um, 
the Tyler was specifically the other topic, obviously, if I'm like, okay, um, like, I can't remember how much of cells have I done. Okay, this is where I am with cells. Um, or if you're in a particular mood of studying, like, sometimes you can be in, a, be in a bit of a lazy mood, which means, oh, you know, I might just sit and read, so then I can go to my e-modules. Uh, e-modules were basically goals last year because most of our stuff was in-person lectures. Um, I imagine you guys have a lot more of what I would call an e-module. Um, or like, you know, I know that I'm like struggling with my labs. Oh, and this is color coded um, by the type of things. That's why this type things at the end here. So if I sort by type, it should also sort by color. Yeah, um, I just used the wrong shade of green there. That, that's going to bother me, isn't it? Hold up. The right shade. There you go. Um, but yeah, and then it's sorted by this. So I have all of my lectures. Uh, yeah, we only had one random thing of reading. And then tutorials. Um, so that's something that I found really useful, especially for keeping on top of stuff. So this is my one for uh, last term. Oh, you notice you, you do a lot more in second year. Um, and then this term, and what I've done recently, which I think is a really good addition, is um, the day I last covered it. Which means that if it's been a while since I've last done something, then this can tell me when when I last covered it. So you, most of the time, it, you could like it matches the day or it's just the day after because I like work from like midnight to five a.m. I wouldn't recommend that, but um, yeah, and that and then I put the color of my confidence as the color of this. So these are black because I've just done them. Um, but yeah, and then keeping on top of it like this means that it's also I find it makes it more manageable rather than being like. Oh, if I go into incendia, I know that like resp is a really big topic. I can like visually see, okay, how am I doing with um, anatomy this term? Okay, I'm on top of anatomy this term. That's great. <laughs> like, how was anatomy last term and so on and so forth? So I think that is another thing I would say that's quite important, just being organized because it makes everything more manageable. So studying, organization, I'd say those are your main things. And then asking for help when you need it. That's the last thing I'm going to cover before I hand over to, I think it's Ryan who's next, right? Um, so getting help, I'd say step one is always um, check your notes, I guess. But I'm assuming your problem is you can't find any notes. So step two is Google it. Um, before you ask anyone else, ask Google. Um, Wikipedia is usually very good for medicine purely because everyone has medical problems and everyone wants to know what they are. So you'll see NHS things, you'll see Wikipedia things, look at those. If it doesn't make sense, scroll down a bit, try and find an explanation. If that doesn't make sense, ask people in your year group and then ask a member of staff. Um, I would say that just means that you kind of bother each group the least possible amount. So then when you actually need them, people are very willing to help you. Um, so yeah, ask for help when you need it. It's completely fine. Doctors, all the way up to consultants, will consult other consultants. Like, that's totally okay to need help. Just don't sit there and freak out and not get any help if you need it. This applies to everything in life, but I'm talking about studying right now. Um, then... I had something in mind. No, it slipped my mind. Uh, studying, organisation, planning... Oh, yeah, sorry. Enjoy it. That was my last thing. So, like, also, we, and remember to have fun with it. You're here for a reason. Um, and, like, you know, you can check your personal statement for that reason. Um, and that is, like, you know, that was probably the stage where you were just really, really excited to get into med school. But it often does have, like, truth in it, right? You had a reason you wanted to be here. You Either you like puzzles, you like saving lives, you like doing something important, you want to do something exciting. Remember that this is your step to get there and kind of enjoy it because it can be stressful. It can be very easy to also give in to the people who are like, oh, you know, this is so long. I hate this. Don't be peer pressured to be like, oh, yeah, I hate studying. It's completely fine to enjoy studying. OK, you can still be a cool kid and enjoy studying. You're a nerd, you're at med school. Just accept it. And that was something I struggled with because there was definitely that group of people in our year who were very much like, Oh, I hate turning up to this. Oh, these labs are dead, bro. Oh, I hate this. I'm just like, no, I actually, I actually quite like this learning stuff. Like, yeah, anatomy is long. That's because the human body is bloody complicated. Um, but like, enjoy it, have fun with it, be okay with being a bit of a nerd. Like, 
you know, if you're going to make the joke like, bro, stop picking your nose, you're going to pull out your pituitary gland. Like, if that's the kind of humour you got to have to get into your subject, just accept it. Like, don't be afraid to nerd out. Don't be afraid to be, like, excited, you know? It's okay to be excited. And if anything, it makes the work a lot easier. If I'm hyped about medicine, then I find it so much easier to get through a long lecture because I'm like, this is the kind of stuff that when you understand it, means that you just get so much more out of it. Um, you know, like in your hospital placement, it's better to be a nerd than to not be a nerd. If you can name like tests that you do to test liver function, you'll impress the heck out of the consultant who wrote registrar who's responsible for you. And that is so much better than you telling the registrar, oh, nah, man, like, I think labs are dead. Like, you know, who, who like, I hate studying or um, books are boring. Like, no, enjoy it, love it. Feel free to be a nerd, have fun with it. Um, and yeah, I'd say that was it. Share medical memes. Try making medical memes, you know, change up your studying. Um, like I said, I watch Osmosis videos. I do reading. I do annotating. Sometimes I might try drawing out things. Uh, there is an, uh, an anatomy colouring book you can get, which is really good for just path, like going over the anatomy. Often they're really well laid out. It's just general atlases. Um, genuinely, making memes has been a way I've revised before. Um, you know, yeah, very it. If you have any specific questions, feel free to like email or message at any point. My email is, uh, it's my uh, hn519 at ic.ac.uk. Just put them in the chat. If you have any specific queries or questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, but yeah. All right. Thank you, Hayda. I think now we have Ryan is going to take over. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'll start by saying that I come from a very different position than Hader. Like, um, what Hader does works incredibly well. Uh, and for most intensive, I think Hader got like 90% in his end of year exams for like POM and BRS. What he does works. And if you want to do well, I would copy what he does. Um, I was not at the same position last year. So Christmas last year, I don't know about you guys, how like POM is structured for you, but for us, it was like, cut into three different sections. Um, we used to use like Coursera and it was like called weeks. So it was like week one, week two, week three. By Christmas, I was one week into POM. So like two thirds of POM, by the time POM had finished, I hadn't done. I didn't start the second third of POM until March. So like basically the entire year I was behind. Um, I think like when Neuro started, I was like awake at four in the morning watching Crash Landing on you. So I like, being organized is not something I was at all last year. I've tried to switch that up this year and it's worked like really well. Like Hader said, second year is like quite a bit busier, but it somehow felt easier for me than first year. Um, but I think something worth saying is that any, any work you do now is inevitably going to be less efficient than work you do like tomorrow and then day after. So anyone who's like really worried that they have like missed out on tons of stuff because they were finding things difficult in town one or they were trying out like learning strategies or things weren't working. Genuinely don't stress about it because by the time you get to Easter, you will have spent enough time learning how to learn that any work you do then will be like way more efficient. I was able to bang out um, the two weeks of POM in the same time the first week of POM took me. Um, so yeah, I, I could share my screen and show you like some of the work I do now, just to like similar to Hader, give you an idea of how I get stuff done. Yeah, sure. I've stopped the screen sharing so you can do it now. So um, I should preface by saying I didn't use Anki last year. I really tried in like two weeks of POM, um, like time weeks, not like content weeks, um, but I could not do it. I just didn't have like the discipline to put like enough cards in. What I've done this year is I've started using Anki, but I think the mistake some people make is they think that they have to Ankify everything. Don't do that. Not everything works with Anki. It's best for stuff like anatomy that's just rote memorization. Like understanding stuff, Anki will not help you with, and it will probably just hurt you with in the first place. Um, like here, I have like a tracker for all the stuff I do. I think, again, like a difference between me and most people, which some of you might be similar in, is that I am like just utterly degenerate in like attendance and attending anything. Like if I look at calendar from last year, last week, didn't go to this, 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 didn't go to this. So like the way I do everything is I just note down everything I meant to do. And whenever I have free time, I just slowly work through it. 
um, which for me, I feel is fine because the fact is, is that at the end of the year, you'll have like a BRS exam, but you won't have a BRS exam now. So you don't need to feel like you've got everything up to snuff yet because you've got until like the end of Easter to get things down. Anatomy is a little bit different because with anatomy, you've only got one like dissection room in clinical school session. So I'd prioritize that if I could. Um, it's like a really wasted opportunity um, coming from someone who didn't understand any of head, neck and spine at all until year two, because I didn't do any of it. Um, I, I do like genuinely regret not putting the work in earlier and like sacrificing that for other stuff. Um, in terms of resources, Hayda was talking about, I think there's a real distinction to be made between extra reading and looking for stuff. I think by far the only reason why I'm like doing fine right now is like, I don't go to any tutorials that I feel like I need to. And the reason for that is because if there's something I don't understand, like there are plenty of resources that I know about, I can look up. So like Acklands, for example, um, I've watched the entirety of Acklands probably two or three times at this point, um, just because it's irreplaceable in terms of like content. Osmosis is a similar thing where if there's anything you don't understand, Osmosis and like Wikipedia is a good first shout. Like don't look at it thinking about if you see a new fact, it's something new you have to learn. That's the wrong way to be looking at it. I think some people still come from like high school and they have that kind of like perfectionist, something I get told I have to remember. That's not the way you're looking to go into it. Um, by now, it should be getting easier to accept that you will not remember everything. And there's like just no point in trying. So the like best priority you can have is just, if you don't understand something, spending as much time as is necessary, trying to understand that concept. Forget about memorization um, until you've understood something. Once you've understood it, it'll be a lot like easier. You guys have got open book exams this year as well. So um, in the middle of an open book exam, you can look up details. You cannot look up a concept and like quickly understand it. That is much, much more difficult. Um, in terms of like actual revision, I basically just anchify most lectures, uh, anatomy as well. When it comes to stuff like PVB and LMAP, I realize it doesn't seem important now. It really is. I would, I would definitely say like POM, POM is multiple levels less important than PVB, in my opinion. Having done hospital placements and GP placements, it is laughably less important. Um, so do not do not skip PVB sessions. Do not skip like GP placements. They are so important. Um, conceptually, they're the most like difficult in terms of revision. Um, but again, it's worth just like tracking the work you've got to get done. Each session tends to come up with tends to come out with like a single key point you need to remember. Um, so like, like a PVB session about like patient safety or patient care or like quality improvement. There'll be one main thing to come out of that. Same goes for LMAP. You guys will like do a podcast later this year. And while you might feel that like LMAP sessions right now aren't so important, they become increasingly more relevant for year two. Um, so put the work in now and it will pay off when you get there. Um, something else that I use is like these things called blurts. Uh, this isn't mine. I wish I had this handwriting, but it's basically anytime you see a concept, you don't like fully remember, you just get out a piece of paper or like some open page on your iPad, write down everything you can remember in like whatever color you want. And then look at the actual content that you were meant to have remembered. Um, everything you didn't get down, write down in red. Keep doing that for every single topic you do. I think for me, I tried it with year one a little bit. It was how I revised where, yeah, I deleted them because I was like copy pasting to the new year. Um, but I had like reps and reps and reps. So I put like a date in here and then I could scroll through this, skim through this and then see like, it's been about a month since I've done this. I should probably go back and do it again, but it's only been three days since I've done this. So I probably shouldn't need to worry about that. Um, but yeah, you guys hear a lot about like active, like learning and stuff like that, but you never get told specifically how to do it. It's like a really weird buzzword where people are like, well, if you actively learn things, then everything is easy and life is good and everything's happy. It, it, then no one gives you like specific examples of how, how to do it. Anki is an example of how to do it, but flashcards don't work for everyone. As long as you're doing some kind of like, closed book like recall thing followed by finding out what you got wrong and noting it down you're doing active like learning and active recall i have friends who don't make notes who don't make flashcards or anything they just like look at slides try and remember what was on that slide um turn their monitor back on again look at it and if they got everything they're like fine i know it um but yeah i'm not sure if there's anything else i've missed um 
but like as a general principle and um, kind of complete opposite of most people who would be giving you advice at this point. Um, if you feel stressed because you're behind or anything, don't worry about it. You will get better at learning and studying and revising like rapidly throughout the year, um, which I guess sounds weird because it kind of makes you feel like some of your work so far might not have been like as efficient as it could have been, but that's, it's like a necessary stepping stone. You need to work like in a horrible way to learn what makes learning like bad, bad to get better at it. Like you need to have spent that time. Like term one and term two is that time. By the time you get to Easter, you'll be cracking through stuff really, really quickly. Um, as long as you just put enough time in practicing this stuff early on. Um, but yeah, as someone who like didn't do any of gastro, didn't do any of Euro, did half of cardio, did like a third POM by the time Easter started and still finished the year at like 85%. It is genuinely fine. Um, and I tell you what, I'll finish up with something else that I would recommend. Um, you guys are gonna have an open book exam this year because COVID. Um, as far as I know, speaking to like James Moss and faculty, that might continue for year two as well. So something I made at the end of last year, which is the only reason I passed the year, took me three days to make, but oh my God, it was amazing. Is this like seven gigabyte just behemoth of every single PowerPoint in the entire course. I, I would recommend you make one genuinely. It is a cop out and I like don't skimp on revising and learning stuff because you're like, oh, it's an open book exam. I can look stuff up. They will ask you questions. Like they'll give you cases that you can't look up. They'll be like, a patient comes in with this kind of pain and these kind of issues. What do they have? What's the next step? You can't look that up without understanding it. Um, but if they ask virtual recall questions, like what does stellate cell store in the liver? You can look that up, like control F the entire course right here. There was one like six mark question in our exam last year that was like, so stupidly niche. And the entire point of it was to be niche. Like you're not expected to get more than 60% on these exams, maybe 70 if you're good. The only reason we all did so well is because it was a closed book exam. It was an open book exam written like a closed book exam. That won't be the case for you guys. Um, but while you're going through the course, if you finished Electra and you feel like you were comfortable with it, just add it to like a rolling pile of resources in like a single document. So that when exams run, if you really have no idea, like, on a specific detail, you have somewhere to turn to, to just control F as like a Hail Mary measure. Um, but yeah, happy to take any like other questions you guys have. I think Viraj is here now. So I think we can probably go on to him and then the, do the Q&A after. Hi guys, um, can you all hear me? Cool. Um, yeah. So, um, sorry, I wasn't here for the previous bit. Um, what I'm going to talk about is more, it's sort of less on um, actual studying and like methods of learning. I'm going to be talking more about um, sort of integrating efficiency into your studying and managing studying on top of sort of all your different other commitments that you have and how to be a really efficient learner. Um, talk more about like your day and productivity and things like that. Um, so, I was just going to start by saying that. I know that first it can be obviously a lot, a lot of content. Um, and I think the first thing I want to say is it's important at this stage not to stress out. Um, and I know it's easier said than done, but um, I know when I personally got to this stage last year, um, it's easy to compare yourself to a lot of other people who've been studying quite consistently um, throughout the year and think that you don't know anything. Um, and I, I, I want to say that that Firstly, that doesn't really mean anything about how you're going to actually perform your exams. Um, and B, it doesn't mean that you can't change change what you're doing now already. Um, so I think my main message is going to be focusing on how to make the most of limited time. Um, and I wanted to start off on kind of a rogue point, which is that um, timetables and to-do lists are great methods for the right person, but they don't work for everyone. Um, and I think you kind of hear this a lot um, in first, you've been like, oh, how do you manage your time? Just create to-do lists and like work through them. Personally, I felt like they were never ever useful for me. And I've never found that they've worked particularly well. I just found that they stressed me out. Um, so instead what I did was I kind of approached the way that I looked at things with kind of a list of goals that I wanted to achieve every day. So take your average bog standard medical school day. You might have some lectures, you might have some revision to do, you might have some assignments and you might have your extracurricular sort of commitments um, and anything else that you want to do. 
Um, and it's nice to sort of spin it into sort of your, the academic side, the personal side, the social side, um, and then your general sort of um, well-being side of things. That's delightful how I like to approach things. And um, I like to come up with a few goals um, for each that I want to achieve each day. Um, and instead, I kind of approach it by making these kind of rough goals. Um, I don't think you should make goals that should be sort of de too detailed. Um, as I think you need to realise that you would need to be flexible. I think trying to heavily plan your days out, especially in medical school, is not going to be a successful method of sort of approaching your studying and approaching sort of the way you look at med school. Um, because I just think it's unrealistic for you to be able to achieve half the stuff that you said you were going to do. Um, so I think giving yourself that breathing space is really important. Um, and when it comes to actually like working out what tasks you have to do, I would say you should prioritize tasks by sort of um, urgency first. So um, say it's Saturday and you have like 10 lectures to catch up on, um, you have a CSI exam coming up um, and you're like, where do I start? How do I get all of this done? I think it's important to figure out um, when you need to actually have everything done by and plan accordingly. Um, so for example, at the start of the day, do the most, do, do tasks that you feel are more pressing, more important. For example, if you have a I'm coming up the next day, that's what you should work on first. Um, and the sort of second point leading on from this is you should kind of prioritise more brain intense tasks first. I know it's easy to fall into a trap of like, oh, I can't bother to do this right now, so I'll do it later. It just builds up and you never get around to doing it. So sort of more brain heavy tasks, for example, actually revising a lecture is something I definitely recommend you should kind of do earlier. Um, now, what I, what I learned, I actually attended a meta talk at the start of um, first year called Learning How to Learn, and I'm not sure if you guys have that. Um, so we had um, essentially um, an old year, Sally Barker, talk about how she kind of used some sort of Gantt charts. Um, I found that was quite complicated to get into, but when, it, when, I, when I started to do that, um, it's actually worked really well. It's, it's basically what it is. It's kind of a really simple thing, um, your sort of progress um, in studying. Uh -huh. so, okay. Okay. Um, cool. So um, a Gantt chart is actually a way of tracking where you're studying. So um, say you have a list of lectures that you want to approach um, or that you, how you have to cover by a set deadline. Um, first, like write a list of everything you have to do, because I think that makes it a lot clearer for you. Um, and then simply taking off, like if you watch the lecture, make a tick. If you've sort of um, made flashcards, I don't know if you use flashcards, um, but if you kind of made flashcards, write, like put a tick down next to that. Um, and then kind of have a sort of rough deadline by the, of the time scales you want to review everything by. So for example, if you want to review a lecture three times, you first write it down, see, then see, see if you completed it. Then after that on the chart, you kind of put um, how, how difficult you found it and how much time you need to spend reviewing it. Um, and according to that, you kind of can add onto the charts um, later on. I found that's been quite effective. Obviously it's a, lot, it's a lot to get your head around at first, especially if you haven't been used to that style of learning before or haven't sort of used that to study before. But I think genuinely putting in, putting in the effort now to something, to something like that, it doesn't have to be a Gantt chart, just a simple way of monitoring and keeping on track of everything will do you so much wonders in the long term. Um, yeah, um, I think the next thing I want to talk about was sort of um, Pomodoro. Um, and I know it's an app that might some of you use. I don't have perfect experience with it, but um, yeah, a lot of my friends say it's really useful to say to, to say concentrated on that. Um, and kind of more for well-being point, I think it's important to think of the bigger picture. So it's easy to get stressed by not having completed something that you wanted to do. Um, and I think that's the consequence of sort of over planning and overestimating how much you can actually do in a day because you're only human. Um, just try to think of the bigger picture. Will, will studying, will not studying this now actually matter in a few days? Probably not. Like you can probably get around to it later. Um, so I think it's um, it's important to kind of think of that when you're approaching your studying. Um, the next thing I the next thing I kind of wanted to say was um, I personally um, got involved in quite a lot of extracurricular and supercurricular stuff last year, and as a result. Um, it got kind of difficult to manage a lot of the commitments that I signed up to. Um, I, know, I feel like as a person, I like to get distracted. I kind of get involved in a lot of different things um, to distract myself from like actually learning. Um, so it's, 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 it's been a learning curve to figure out how to sort of manage that on top of um, 
Board of Med School. Um, so what I've figured worked for me, I'm not sure if it will work for you, but it's something you should definitely try, was to set a lot of time to do extra stuff and keeping yourself strict with those. Um, and now it is a lesson. I don't want you to think you can sort of go away and suddenly change your whole like studying habits. Um, I feel like it's a very constant process of sort of self-disciplining yourself. Um, another thing to like ask yourself is, can you actually multitask? So that's a good way to make better use of your time. So for example, um, you probably haven't told us a lot, but if you, if you make flashcards, um, doing flashcards whilst waiting, um, it is a lot of effort to start. But once you start, the motivation actually kicks in, I feel. Um, and you just need to get into that routine. And obviously it's tricky to get to get into it, but forcing yourself to do that just for the first of, first few, second, two or three times, I think that's what will build your motivation up when you finally get that you're actually getting somewhere through revision, you are, uh, things are trying to make sense. Um, and I, that, that leads me to another point about motivation. I think a lot of people view motivation as kind of something quite abstract and something that's not, it's like something you either have or you don't have. And I don't like that. I think sometimes you have to kind of have the blunt realization that motivation will only come when you start doing a task. And um, it's something that I've noticed a lot like this year and last year. And um, it's easy to be like, oh, I don't have the motivation to do this now. I'll do it another time when I do when I have, when I do have the motivation to do it. Um, now I'm not saying like sacrifice your well-being time or sacrifice your sleep to do that. But what I am saying is that often it's easy to do that because it's convenient. Um, <clears throat> But actually forcing yourself to just make a start on something um, instead of being like, oh, I won't be able to finish this, so I'm therefore not going to like attempt it at all. I think as, as, as I kind of alluded to before, a lot of us are perfectionists in med school and kind of want to do everything to like the best of our ability um, at all times. And I think one of the learning curves for universities realizing that that's, that's simply not always possible and therefore making a start is better than doing nothing. Um, and I feel like when you actually make the start, the motivation will come. Um, and I've noticed that the motivation only tends to come when you start working. And I feel like just forcing yourself to get started is the biggest thing. And once you do that, you find that you kind of can get a lot more done in your day because you're not wasting your time being like, oh, I'll just do this later, I'll just do this later. And have everything packed up for the end of the day when you're really tired and then you just leave it. Um, so I feel like you should, that's a good way to make sure you use limited time you do have quite effectively. Um, another sort of aside I was gonna talk about was focus on you and, your, and your, yourself. Um, it's quite rude to say, but in your head, I feel like it can be like people are always thinking about each other and sort of like, what, what is that person doing studying? Is that person really on top of it, et cetera, et cetera. In reality, it's not the case. Um, I just think people only truly care in, in this sense um, about themselves. And, and I think that you should do the same um, instead of like focusing on what other people are doing. Um, because I don't know, I feel like it's quite self-sabotaging in a way and everyone else has sort of a different life in different contexts. So I don't think you should compare yourself to other people. Um, and I think that that's really worked. So just focus on you and what you're doing, knowing that you'll get there in the end. Um, it's really useful and it's a really useful approach, I feel. Um, and also thinking about what other people are doing will stress you out. Believe me, we are in for medical students and I feel like it's very easy to sort of get imposter syndrome and feel like you don't deserve to be here because so other so people are being really on top of things. Um, and that's why I feel like you, you should kind of avoid doing that and focusing just on you and yourself and what matters to you and what you want to achieve. Um, that's kind of a way that I approach things. Um, now, in terms of like actual actionable points, um, to make sure I um, sort of affect, I'm really effective in using a limited amount of time, um, what I like to do is like I put my, um, I, I would say I, I used to have quite a big addiction to my phone. And what I do before is I kind of put my phone on airplane mode turn it off and leave it really far away and then do my studying somewhere completely different. Um, now, obviously, if with remote learning, that's very difficult because I know some of you might use your iPad to study. Um, so what, in, what I do in that case is place on do not disturb mode. If you're going over flashcards that you have offline, literally just turn, turn your Wi-Fi off and um, put your phone in airplane mode. Um, it really, really does work. I and mean, it can reduce the temptation to kind of just go, go on something and then like end up wasting a lot of time. Because I feel like if you have a lot of other commitments and um, you want to be efficient with the time you do have. It means you need to be effective with the time that you're spending on studying. Um, so like what I do is so when I'm doing anti flashcards on my phone, for example, I turn my phone on airplane mode and like turn off all the notifications, putting on do not disturb. Um, Cause I feel like that's a way of forcing me to actually make the most of that time. Um, and I think that it's also important to set your own boundaries and limits. 
So something I've noticed um, is that people think you're constantly available to help out or do stuff. Um, this is more like related to if you, if you sign up for extra stuff or do extra commitments and stuff. I think it's perfectly okay to refuse and be honest with people um, when you can't take things on. Um, for example, if you don't sign up to do something, you shouldn't feel obliged to do it. You should prioritize what you feel will be more beneficial in the long term. Um, and that's an approach I like to take. Um, and then in terms of a last actionable point, I'd say, I'd say sort of make sure the last half an hour to hour of stuff you do in your, in your day before you have your downtime is the quickest stuff. So that's why I leave a lot of my admin and organization stuff to the end of the day, as I feel like it's the least draining for me and it requires the least effort. For example, sending out an email, um, completing a form, et cetera. Um, it's just easy to do that when you have less, when you're more tired and you have less motivation to do stuff because it's, 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 it's a much easier task. And I think laying your day out in that way ensures that you have great efficiency um, in tasks that you do need to prioritize. Um, and you just, get, you just get through them a lot more quickly and you get a lot more done um, in your days. Um, also, when it comes to breaks for well-being, do not make them breaks that involve stressful distractions. Um, I think it's quite easy when you're having a break, especially because we are remote learning. Oh, I'm just going to turn on my phone and check what's happening. Sometimes, like I found this especially, like I'm having a break from studying, I look on the group chat and realize everyone's asking questions about something I haven't done yet, and it stresses me out. And then I start the next thing being really stressed out, and then I just kind of give up because it's all a bit too much. And I think that that's, that's something to try and avoid. Um, so when I'm taking breaks, I try to avoid doing that. Um, it's not something I recommend. I think when you're having a wellbeing break, you should ensure that time is completely free of thinking about studying or anything. Um, I think that that would be really, really useful for you. Um, sometimes you do need to be reachable. So as I said before, just turn sound notification off um, and place your phone elsewhere. Because I think that's, um, that's really useful to kind of turn off stuff that you don't really need to be worrying about. Um, and I think the last point I wanted to end on, um, it's kind of a big point, is to be realistic. Um, so all the points I mentioned, all the things that everyone else has said before me, you're not going to achieve them, all of this, um, in sort of the next day. You can't just be like, oh, I want to I want to change my study habits um, and then achieve everything. It all comes in short progress. Um, so it's, it's literally just simply by starting by doing one positive thing to improve your study habits um, and then adding another like later on based on how the first one goes and then gradually building it up and ramping and adding more parts to your day and like improving different aspects of your day um, and I think that will allow you to see a lot more long-term um, sustainment of um, your new study plans um, it's not kind of an all or nothing thing it's not like you have to like either go to these extremely productive days. I, I think it's quite difficult because I think um, you guys especially have been remote all the time. So you're kind of only seeing what people are putting online. Um, so it's not like, oh, you can suddenly live the life um, a really productive YouTuber you've seen or a really productive person you've seen on social media. Um, if you think you started, if you, I think if you think you're gonna suddenly change and like incorporate all these tips that everyone said so far, um, you won't most likely, and you'll just revert to how you were before and you're not going to achieve anything in the long term. Um, whereas if you kind of take things a lot slower, um, I think you'll have a higher chance of kind of pursuing um, what you want um, and um, actually achieving your goals by the end of it. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of the way I approach um, efficiency and making the most of limited time and kind of managing all my other stuff on top of it. Um, and yeah, I'll be happy to take any questions. Obviously, it's been very brief. Um, I have a lot more specific points if you want to if you guys want to ask me anything specifically relevant um but yeah i just want to second that point by the way that is it's so so important the enemy of good is great people like trying to be perfectionist and being like i need to get this strategy nailed down so i can like spend the next three hours doing this exact same thing it is so tiring you will not get no one no one does anything well on their first try like that's the entire way that humans get better at things you get better at them through doing them trash you will find like term one really difficult because you need to have that difficulty to get better and improve at how you're learning for term two same goes for all of these if you see something that we recommend like i don't know using anki or like uh tra like tracklist or checklist for stuff try it out but try it out gradually so you can like slowly implement it and if it works then you can ramp it up a little bit more and if not then no harm done because you've not invested too much in it Exactly that. Um, I think, yeah, as you said, the biggest enemy to, 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 to good is great. Um, 
and you do need to be realistic like it's not going to be an overnight change to achieve everything that you want um and setting small achievable goals is a lot is, has, does a lot better for your sort of long-term sustainment of your new study your new found study habits than kind of um just uh kind of trying to attempt to do too much too too quickly and getting really stressed and overwhelmed so yeah definitely agree with that Hey guys, uh, my name is Adruja. Uh, I am a third year. Um, and so I'm going to basically be talking to you. I'm, I'm sure a lot of this you've already heard. Um, so I might be repeating a lot of what's already been said. Um, but I'm basically going to give you four kind of how to's. So we're going to go through how to revise. I'm going to give you like a blueprint and you're going to follow it and then you're going to smash first year. Um, I'm also going to tell you how to enjoy it. So um, yeah, you've got to enjoy it, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise you're not going to last long, so I'm going to tell you how to do that. I'm also going to talk to you about how to fail. Um, you won't find a single doctor who has not failed, and it's really important to learn how to fail. Um, so we're going to talk about that. And then we're also going to talk about how to grow. You come into medical school at 18, you leave at 24, you're going to grow, and we need to talk about how to do that. So how to revise. I'm going to tell you what I do and what works for me. Um, so I do the Pomodoro method. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this. 25 minutes on, five minutes off, 25 minutes on, five minutes off, 25 minutes on, and then like a half an hour break. Those five minute breaks are not going to be on your phone. A, a break on your phone is not a break because that five minute break will be another TikTok or just a few more Instagram stories or whatever, and it won't be a five minute break. So what you're going to do is you're going to use those five minutes, five minute breaks to get up, walk around and do something productive. So that could be doing your washing up, uh, folding up your laundry. It could be going to the kitchen and making a cup of tea, something like that. And that is, you will literally feel so resetted and you can go back to doing your flashcards or whatever. Um, the second thing on how, to, how I revise personally is um, doing flashcards, so doing Anki. And the, what, the, the thing that I say is if you are going to, if you give me the choice of spending 25 minutes on making flashcards or 25 minutes of studying flashcards, what am I going to be able to do better in an exam with? And it's going to be the 25 minutes using flashcards. So honestly, trust me when I say the exam I did best in, in first year, and like not, not just like good, I did really well in, was neuro. I went to about two neuro lectures. That was it. <laughs> and back in my day, back when we did uh, LCRS and all of that, we had maybe like 20 neuro, flash, uh, neuro lectures. I went to two. Uh, and I got in the 90s and that was from just doing pre-made flashcards uh, because personally I could either watch the lecture for an hour and I, I was one of those where I was honestly about 40 lectures behind and I thought and like don't ever get yourself in the mindset of oh I'm this many behind you're not behind okay it, there's, there's like it doesn't work like that especially with online uni it's very easy to kind of like wake up late one day feel like you're behind and then get into a habit of like missing lectures to catch up on lectures and you don't want to do that just do like, I think it's way more effective. I'm not saying miss your lectures, go to your lectures, but honestly, doing your flashcards, if you're going to do an hour of that, you're going to get way more from doing an hour of flashcards on a lecture than actually sitting through the lecture. So one thing I would say is not worth doing is writing your notes, editing your notes, trying to make like a comprehensive copy of loads of different like mesomedic notes, med ed notes, and like all these old year notes. Like sometimes at medical school, you get thrown in with too much information and you feel like you need to use all of it at once. And like, it's great that we have all these talks. It's great that you get so many people to talk to you about, but do what works for you. Um, and that literally is the strategy to revise. Um, and if I promise you, if you do that an hour every single day from now till your exams, you will remember that stuff for second year. It won't just be for the exams and you will be fab. Um, so that is the very long and short of how to revise. Treat yourself well. If your brain is tired, it's tired. It's not going to pick up anymore. Don't bother. Um, how to enjoy it. Okay. So there's two parts of this. There's how to enjoy like what you're actually doing academically. And then there's also just how to enjoy university. Um, so how to enjoy it academically. I think what you need to do is find what interests you. And if something interests you, go and have a look at it. Go and have a look at it further. So go and have a look at like, okay, I don't know, for example, you might really like some of the endo stuff you're doing. How does this relate to um, real life endo patients? How does this relate to cases? How does this relate to that kind of thing? And like, have a little look in that. And I think that when you actually, especially as you guys are doing your kind of placements a bit earlier than we did, 
when you actually see it in a real person, it's way easier to remember. It's way more interesting. Um, and you actually really see like the point of learning it. You're like, wow, this actually does change lives when you're revising and like it is actually important. Um, how to enjoy university. I think Viraj said a lot of this. So join extracurriculars um, and like just, you know, you'll make friends. That's the way to make friends. You'll really enjoy it. I've done loads of extracurriculars. Um, I've really enjoyed them and it doesn't like I, it doesn't take away from your revision okay so like um honestly you just have to like schedule time out and it will if anything it makes you more productive because you've got something that you're doing in the evenings so you're like right I need to get everything done by 6 p.m because I've got a choir rehearsal at six so it actually makes you really productive I think so join as many societies as you feel that you can take on okay so the next bit we're going to talk about is how to fail okay so I failed MCD in first year I had to reset it in the summer and honestly I was like oh no I'm a failure like you know and like medics we're not very good at failing right because you've been at school the whole time you've been smart okay you've all got A's A stars in your GCSEs your A levels um I don't know if for you guys if it was nines and ones I don't I don't know but you've all been smart okay so you've never really properly failed before most of you maybe the biggest failure you guys may have had was a rejection from I don't know UCL but you probably haven't failed and so actually you're getting an email that says fail is something that we're not used to doing and I think you have to really you know you know that was the best thing that ever happened to me so if you do fail an exam that's completely fine if you don't do as well in something as you thought you might have done that's completely fine doctors are smart people it's hard to become a doctor and it doesn't mean that you're any less than anyone else it doesn't mean that you're not able to do um anything else you just have to like okay how, how can I describe this if you fail that like honestly all this advice I'm giving you right now is what I learned in that first year one month summer uh, like the period between that and my reset okay because honestly I realized that all I was doing was listening to all those like you know they give you all these like my chemist and study skills and all of this and I was taking on too much information forgetting that actually I had got myself to medical school before and before and I had passed exams before and how did I do that I did that with my method of Pomodoro and flashcards and so stick to what you know and if you know it works for you fine you don't have to follow something just because they've said at medical school you need to do this but if at A-level all you did was read notes, don't do that. That is like, <laughs> don't do that. So um, that is how to fail. And if you fail, send me a message. I mean, you can send me a message regardless, but you can put me an email, you can talk to me. I've been there, I felt like utter shit, but honestly, it's where you'll, it's where you'll grow, it's where you'll become strong, it's where you'll get a personality. Um, so honestly, it's fab. Um, and then the last bit is how to grow. So obviously you start uni when you're 18, most of you, you're leaving when you're 24, that's a long time, that's six years, so how are you gonna grow? Um, and I think what's really important is at the end of every assessment, at the end of every piece of work, even at the end of every week, reflect, think, what did I enjoy? What did I not enjoy? Um, and this is really, really important when you get to clinical, clinical years. So for example, um, I, I drive to my placement every single day. I've been working at the moment in ITU, I've been working in A&E and I've been working in acute meds. Obviously I've been seeing, seeing a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Um, that are very very difficult to see a lot of dying patients a lot of a lot of patients who aren't doing very well and so what I make sure as I have it to do at the end of every single day is go on the notes on my phone and write every kind of single new condition I've seen kind of anything that like for example even even the simple fact that when we were on ITU there was a patient who was so poorly they're completely unresponsive but we know she likes ABBA so we played ABBA for the whole 12 hour shift and every time we would change the album she would open her eyes and that is something that I would love to remember when I am 30 years old and that you know, you know that's my first experience of ITU in the COVID pandemic so write down these things because they are gems and they are what medical school is about medical school is not about your CSIs whatever they are and your POMs and your primary courses it's not about that it's honestly about becoming good doctors making lifelong friends um and that is essentially, that is how to do medical school. So you need to revise, you need to enjoy it, you need to fail and you need to grow. That's my four things. So um, any questions? I think I'm passing on now to Lilia. Um, I think it's gonna be a bit of a question and answer, but you can ask me anything. Can I just say something before this quickly? Um, I would just like to say like, what she said, a couple of those things, like a hundred percent, like two really important things, like one thing, one of the first things I remember hearing at med school was from one of the professors. Ryan knows I love that we both love this quote, which was, <laughs> "You leave med school after six, you own your degree, you've done it wrong." And that is like the kind of like I feel like the spirit of what Adridge was saying, like a million percent. I didn't really talk about it because there's study skills and also it's like pandemic. Yeah, I don't want you guys to get FOMO, but like 
I was booked every single day of the week from around like halfway through first term. Sometimes double booked, but that was my own mistakes. But like legit, like if I didn't have an event on a week evening, I would I would find something like whether it's like a niche society having a games night, go enjoy it, live your best life. When you guys get to that, 100% do that. The second thing would be, yeah, don't forget what you did at A-levels. Like I, for the beginning of uni, was freaking out because I was like, I know I can't keep up with these Ankies. It's a nightmare. I can't do them. You know, I'm trying to like make notes for the first time and I'm freaking out. And the best I ever did in the exam was like CSI 7 where I was like, I'm going to revise like it for A-level. I'll look at the stuff. I'll write it down. I'll say it out loud, I'll talk to myself, and I'll just revise like it's like back in year 13. And honestly, when I do that, even though it's not quite the way you see Ali Abdul do on YouTube, I liked it and it helped me and it worked. And I do think like, definitely take on stuff and listen to advice and test these things out. You never know what will help and what won't. But do remember like you got yourself here. Like I, I just want to like, you know, like bump that message a million percent. That is such a like fantastic thing to remember because you're going to be surrounded by geniuses who all have their own way of being a genius and it's understandable that you're like shit like i saw some dude in the lecture making flashcards as the person was speaking that's so intense he's the best student in the room you forget that you got an a star as well and like you got into imperial med as well and he probably sees you and he's like shit like she's on it you know and everyone, everyone thinks someone else has a big secret. So remember that, you know, you know stuff too. Yeah, I second that. Do never underestimate the ability of someone to fake it, like, and pretend that that's them making it. They have no idea what's going on. I, at this point, I feel like I've gotten a reputation in my year for answering people's questions. Every single one, I, I shit you not. I just Google. I Google, I copy the first Google result. I copy paste it. And somehow people are like, oh my God, I... I'm like three topics behind in BRS right now. And I'm answering questions in GI on lectures I haven't seen. Never, never, if someone like seems like they know what they're doing, never take that and be like, well, I am like so, so screwed. You are not genuinely, everyone is like in a really similar position. Um, yeah. And then a second thing, this is unrelated, but it's based on a question someone asked about like, where I mentioned I was really behind in year one. And I said that like, they asked, where did you start from when you were trying to catch up? Um, I actually remember how I started. I started with society tutorials. Um, MM's like slides were like my base point, And then I built on them. I say that just because Adria is rag chair. Rag are running like a really, really cool um, tutorial scheme right now for year ones. MM is running a year one scheme. Medit is running like a BRS scheme that um, no bias I'm teaching in. <laughs> um, but there are so many like, societies doing teaching. So if you do want like a base like to start off on something you're behind on you don't understand they're a really good starting off point yeah i'd also say like on mm and tutorials it's a good way to get revision done when you can't be asked to do a revision like i didn't revise much at all because i was like a hundred a million percent trying to get involved in everything in term one as you guys will see next like in your first non-covid year you have like depending on your niche you have charity week you have the first few sports competitions you have every single free single sports session you're going to attend one session of dodge one session of badminton all of that and the only reason I didn't forget everything is because like three weeks after the fact, I would go to one MM tutorial and they'd cover POM section one immunology or sorry, POM section three immunology. I'd go a bit later on, I'd go to cardio rest and they would just kind of remind me and ask me questions and make me revise. So like two hours a week, someone was making sure that I was going over one topic from the past. Um, and you guys are lucky there are three of those. Like if you just attend one or two tutorials a week, even if they're completely random, if they're topics you're comfortable with, that's fine. You'll remember more niche details and that might come up in like that one distinguishing question. Like allow that stuff to help you learn as well and make the most of it. Like I've heard that they're running a really great CSI series. I heard they have some really cool tutors for the MedEd CSI series. Um, like the Dyspepsy one. I heard he's a really cool guy, great fashion sense. So maybe, you know, check those out. But yeah, Lilia. Okay, um, so I was just going to say, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat because we'd like to get a few questions going around. The one that I know, there's one that Ryan already responded to, but maybe some other people could answer, which is, where would you recommend getting pre-made flashcards if you use them? I would try out a couple. Um, people have different styles. I personally know that I've downloaded loads of packs of flashcards um, 
from other people in our year, from previous years, from like random online, like step one American people. And some of them are good, some of them I hate. Like, I'm like, I have no idea how you learn from this. Like, I don't know what was going through your head when you wrote this. And I have a feeling it only works for you. When they're like, oh yeah, endochronology four. And I'm like, what the f is that? Like, or they're like, oh yeah, describe like Cushing syndrome. I'm like, I don't know what you're trying to get me to say here. You know, some some people have like that style and it works for them because they made them. Some people understand that. They're like, okay, I'll look at the back of the card and learn it like that. I hated it. But um, so I say test it out. You might find one that you like. I know I, I really like like people have made like some case study ones. They've made clue ones. They've made those occlusion ones. So you just need to, you really just need to try and error. Like everything you do will take a bit of work. Put in a bit of work and you'll get great results out of it. Um, but you also don't need flashcards 100%. Like there are loads of other ways to do uh, recall like me, Ryan, and Bridget, everyone's listed them. Don't forget that there are. It's not just flashcards, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah, just to, like add to that. Um, just to, like I, I know for anatomy, especially, I think Ryan mentioned one. Um, I think there's a website which I found. If you search up University of Michigan Cadaver Image Bank, um, there's an that's an amazing website. Um, and what it does is you can download like PDFs, and if you have Adobe Acrobat, it kind of makes the process a lot more streamlined because. Adobe Acrobat actually makes it into kind of flashcards for you um, because they're just labeled diagrams. So then you don't have to kind of waste the time making them and you can kind of just go straight to learning. So that's a lot like that's that's a really good way to like get it really get like lots of stuff done efficiently. Um, and you can kind of look around and stuff like that because I think I, I find that's a lot that's a good way to do it a lot more quickly. Yeah, a PDF I sent I think on the year one group chat I can send again today was um, Rowan's Atlas of um, Cadaver, it's also cadaveric images, something, whatever. But basically, it's like this whole. It's I think it's actually one of the resources they use to make our exams. So the images. That was all they used. Yeah, no, in our in our year it was all they used. I think they might have been able to tell because you could, you could you, like a picture of the abdomen. You look at the abdomen thing, you can find a label diagram, but they're labeled with numbers, and the key for the numbers is somewhere else on the page. So if you just get a piece of like paper and cover that key, I write down the numbers one to twenty five, and use that book to test. But yeah. So Rowan's Atlas is another really great one. I think we can, uh, like, me, Vera, Drew, and Ryan will talk and we can like send you guys a list of these things so you don't have to like worry too much about it. But that's another really good one. Mm. Um, I've got a couple of answers to some of the questions. So the first one that I, I think I can very much answer is if you miss a bunch of lectures, how do you catch up? Do you watch recordings on Panopto? Okay, so... The exam I failed on is the one I watched every single lecture on and made notes on. And I was like 90 behind it, 90 lectures behind at Christmas. And I would watch like six a day straight for like weeks. Okay. And that's the one I failed on. So what I would say is don't see it as you're being behind. Okay. Medicine and being a doctor is not PVB or I don't know, BRS, whatever, POM. No, like in medicine that, that doesn't exist okay so for example if you need to know about abgs okay so you need to know about like have you done abgs yet first years any yeses or no's if you're not talking about no okay so an abg is basically where you look at the different gases and you'll learn it in first year so it's like where you look at like if you're alkalotic or you're acidotic okay now they teach it to you as like oh first year abgs but that but like the, the the fact of the matter is when you get onto the firms, they're not going to be like, okay, so we'll, we'll go up to first year AVGs. Like AVGs are AVGs, right? A chest X-ray is a chest X-ray. There's no like first year chest X-ray, second year chest X-rays and third year chest X-rays. It's just all one thing. So what I say is don't see it as you're behind. Medicine is medicine. Everyone who goes to uni basically comes out learning the same things. Imperial concentrates a little bit more on some topics than other unis would and a bit less on other topics. But honestly, if you want to do it more efficiently, I'd say just get those flashcards and go through it. Don't bother with the watching the lectures and doing all of this because it's a waste of your time. Um, and then the other question um, I said that I would um, answer is about revising PVB. So I'm assuming that's kind of that's your professional values and behavior stuff. OK, so not again, not everything in medicine, like, for example, for communication skills, you would never, ever make flashcards and revise them. You would just use it in practice. OK, so for diversity, do some reading, read the news, read about diversity, read about like racism in medicine, read about how that racism might affect patients. And that's what's going to make you a good doctor. And if you've done that reading, you can walk through that exam having done no flashcards and you will be fine. Yeah, I say on catching up um, last year, there was I got I think, OK, 
from the what we were released on information, I was in the top handful of students for POM. I didn't watch all of the lectures. By the end of the year, there were some which, honestly, it's because I couldn't get through the panopter without falling asleep. Um, certain lecturers, who I won't name, just have the most, not soothing, but mind-numbing voices. Um, and so I went through the slides and then I tried to learn in my own way. I went on to osmosis and I tried to cover the topic like that. And I think that's completely fine. Like Adrija said, information's information, right? Like, and especially with the open book exams, between what Ryan said, and it's like, you you should do this. This is the only piece of advice I would say 100% follow, which is either make it or get your hands on a, co a compilation of all the PowerPoints from the year to control F keywords because they write the exam questions using keywords or even sometimes examples from the slides. So get those. But the other thing is like information is information at the end of the day. Like whether you learn it from an osmosis video, how they explain it in one way, you learn it from the slides where they explain it in another, you'll learn it. The only time I ever watched a lecture during revision, because we had in-person exams, a uh, lecture, sorry. So the only reason I ever went and rewatched one was if I couldn't understand what the slide was talking about. Like very rarely some lecturers like to just put up a picture and you're like, I don't know what I'm meant to learn anymore. And you listen to it. And once you kind of know what you need to know, the slides are your guide for what you know, then like, yeah, I wouldn't say like watching, like Adrian said, watching every lecture won't guarantee that you're going to do well in the exam, but also not watching every lecture, just what they said won't like disadvantage you either. Um, I should mention, so the person who asked me about that, the way that I work right now is that um, so I I wouldn't recommend it. It's like I've spiraled into it and I won't move out of it because it's working fine for me. But if you can work a way that isn't like this, I would recommend you do that. The way I work right now is that I don't go to lectures. I don't go to like in-person things. I don't go to any like Zooms or anything. I'm like fully disconnected from the course. Um, I have like a list, like I showed you earlier, like I shared of everything that I meant to have done so all the lectures or whatever. And then every day I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna work through three of these and I'll just pick like a random few. So like we're doing GI right now. I just did two neuro lectures today. Um, whatever works for you, keep in mind that you'll hear a lot that everything you're assessed on isn't in, like inside your PowerPoints. So you might think that you need to go through every single lecture and memorize everything in them to like do well. That's missing the point. The point is that you're meant to understand the concepts those PowerPoints are teaching you. So simply just going through those like lectures and trying to make sure, well, I've done like five lectures if I like skim read them and speed them up at like two times speed, at least I've gone through them. That's not the point. The most important thing is understanding what you're doing. I like will second what Hader said. Last year, I didn't do any of GI. Um, I didn't understand the slides. It was like really weirdly taught. I didn't like, it looked weird to me. Um, I just binged osmosis videos instead. I like kept playing them on the ones I found most difficult. As long as you have some way to like understand what they're trying to teach you, you are okay. Yeah, I'd say one thing that will bring perspective is your placement. I realized since my placement, like learning medicine for practicing medicine, you need to be able to like, you know, for like understand what's going on well enough to be able to explain it to a patient. And often that is more than enough. And like, you kind of get the hang of like, they don't expect you to be able to oh it's difficult to explain like no matter how you get the information eventually you will have sufficient amounts of information and because you have open book exams don't worry about memorizing which 10 genes predispose you to like type 1 diabetes know perhaps that there is a group of genes or if you can name the group of genes the hla genes for example this group of genes makes you don't worry about like our uh, number 12 is like 34 percent more accurate you're never going to need to know that but having that kind of broad, useful understanding is what you don't need. And with open book exams, you don't need to be able to, mem you don't have to memorize anything. You need to understand the stuff. Um, I would say commit to memory the things which come up, but that will eventually happen naturally. Like for example, I could tell you how to diagnose an MI, came upon our lecture, but the reason I remember it is because it came up in my placement. And it came up in my placement like seven times because I was with a rest a registrar. And it took like two days for me to never be able to forget, like, you know, no, not never able to be like, kind of like, you get used to these things and they kind of become like normal things. So I wouldn't worry about like the kind of memorization stuff. I realize I'm dragging this on a bit, but another thing like worth keeping in mind is that like, it's something that you get increasingly better at as time goes on, but someone like a 50 year old consultant teaching you something, what's easy to them and what's easy to you are very, very different. It's mm -hmm. like from their perspective, they've been in the game so long that they don't know what it was like 
like going through the ranks, you know what I mean? So they will like say stuff that's really niche and say stuff that's really like bread and butter knowledge as if they're the exact same thing. Gradually, you will get better at like seeing stuff and understanding. I realize this is trying to illustrate a point, but it's not something I need to worry about like focusing on right now. Um, you'll get like better at just like honing in on like the high yield stuff and the low yield stuff. Um, it might be something to keep like an eye out for now is to go through lectures you're finding hard and be like, this is a ton of information and just like take a second to look at it and be like, well, if I separate this into detail and concept, how much of this is like a clinically important concept and how much is just like interesting? Do you know what I mean? Okay, so how much first year content will need to keep in memory for second year? Um, technically zero, because if you are ever confused about a concept, you can literally look it up. You won't be assessed. Well, and also because of our new curriculum, it's a spiral curriculum. So everything will be recovered in second year if they're going to assess. And that is actually most things. So for example, in first year, you'll have a brief lecture about diabetes mellitus, which covers type 1, type 2, treatments, diagnosis. In year two, you have electron type one, electron type two, electron complications, macrovascular and electron microvascular complications. But it's so essentially it's recovered just in more depth. Um, some topic people, some sort of topic people, lecturers, <laughs> will actually do a whole like revi like recap thing at the beginning. But you need to understand things basically. It's um, incredibly helpful, but it's not essential if that makes sense. Yeah, um, basically don't. But if that's the implication you're going to revise in the summer, do not revise in the summer. You don't need it, basically. Um, revise in the summer if you're revising for your exams or for your resets. But after you've got your results, please relax. It's year one summer. Um, as in, you don't need to worry about revising year one to get to year two. And also, in the rare events that you don't understand what's going on, I, like, actually, somewhat reasonably, especially when it comes to immuno stuff, will just open up my like the POM stuff on Coursera or on thing or on osmosis, quickly recap myself with like what goes on with the B cells and the T cells, just to make sure I'm understanding what's going on. But it's not that deep. Um, in terms of like what you actually need to remember from first year and I guess second year as well, is what the advice I'll give you is, and this is really, this is gonna be frustrating for you to hear, is that you will not know what you need to know until you get older and you'll be like, oh, I need to know that. Like the last week I had a consultant ask me to recite the Krebs cycle, not just like, oh, it goes from a five carbon to a four carbon. Like it goes from a, I don't even know. And I was like, when I was in first year, I never thought I'd have to do that, but turns out it's relevant in alcohol withdrawal. So, um, you know, that's the thing. You'll never know what you need to know. So all you, all you can do is your very best, okay? So if you don't remember it, don't worry because it will come up again and you'll be like, oh, I needed to know that before. And you can have a quick recap over it. And because you've done your flashcards, you'll remember it. So don't don't stress about not remembering things for second year because you don't know what you need to know yet, if that makes sense. In your year one summer, do not revise. Um, <laughs> like, I, I learned astronomy. There was a free course on Coursera from, I think it was like Princeton or something, some American dude teaching me that like planets don't twinkle but stars do and my mind was blown um and like you know do, do that like binge watch you know i've like watch k-dramas or whatever your equivalent of k-dramas is like Grey's Anatomy. i don't know watch tv enjoy it meet your friends if you finally can like if you guys if lockdown has eased you guys should not be spending time at home <laughs> if there is no covid go out and live your life please um, if you guys are revising in the summer do it because you're genuinely interested in a topic yeah. and you want to learn more, not because you feel like you have to to prepare for second year. Yeah, there is a difference between the yeah. two. Read, read up on topics you're interested in. I know I definitely end up at least once or twice being like, ooh, this disease sounds cool. Or like um, you see something in like, I don't know, watching House MD and they mention a disease. I'm like, I wonder how that works. By all means, read medical stuff if you're interested in it. But yeah, revision in the cl like classical sense. Don't stress yourself out. You'll you have you'll have enough prescribed information. Some people do research projects in the summer, but don't don't stress about research projects. Yeah, you do research in year four, like as part of your course anyway. Yeah. Um, if you find something you're interested in or an opportunity presents itself, don't avoid it. But I wouldn't say, like I think two, the the the, the, the second sound that Ryan knows I love is medics are snakes. A lot of people will at like act like they're doing loads of stuff or act like you know this happens to be something standard when in actual fact they might be just trying to seem impressive like a lot of medics will 
ju- just out of like the pressure they feel lie or inflate the things that they're doing. I know someone who said he assisted in a surgery as a first year. He most definitely did not assist in surgery in first year. Um, but he wanted to, you know, seem like he was on it and had some rare, cool opportunity. And I'm just like, like, mind you, some people are doing like a metric ton of stuff, but they're so busy doing it. They never have time to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the best saying is that if your success is really successful, it will speak for itself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that's kind of, and when, when you think of all the successful people that you look up to, like the truly successful people that you look up to, uh, they never have to brag about it because their success is loud enough. Mm. I think something worth like keeping in mind, uh, there was like an event that Viraj ran, incredible event a while ago, there was like women in surgery. And like the thing that stuck with me that I've like noticed it said repeatedly as time has gone on. And it was the, like, that event is when it really struck me because every single person said it without fail. But they were like, the idea of faking it till you're making it, people really underestimate how much like people are just winging it genuinely like you might hear that someone is like doing like a really senior research project because people do there are second years who are doing research projects and some of them sure are like going for it but like 99 percent of people who are doing really cool stuff literally just saw something and were like oh that'd be cool and they signed up for it and now they're doing stuff that's yeah. how most of it happens they just it like they go along with the flow and things like happen to them you know what yeah I, mean? I also want to like caveat here i i, I only think for myself and maybe a little bit of ryan because i kind of know ryan uh, which is while we're giving you advice we're also i think at least me, I'm reflecting the best of what I do. Um, Like there are definitely weekends when I don't like manage to get everything I want to get done. And that's completely fine. And like, there are days when I might just like, you know, have my to-do list, but I will do, like I said before, like I may end up doing nothing wrong. Something unexpected will happen. I'll catch it, like happen to catch a conversation with a friend and like, you know, it, it's okay to not be, doing that peak performance at all times that's human and normal and like literally everyone has bad days people have mental health days like I remember in first year and even second year there have been days where I'm just like having a little freak out um and on those days it's it's like forgive yourself you know like something I said to my medic kids was at the end of Christmas holidays if you didn't manage to like I don't know conquer palm in December forgive yourself and try and figure out where you can work and what you can try and do better for next time. But it's okay that things don't go like the way you wanted them to. And it's okay if like some days you don't manage to stick to everything. Some days you don't manage to like get it all done. Like I'm giving you advice to try and the tools that have helped me try and be as close to really great as I can in terms of my work ethic. But there are days when I just don't get through this stuff. There are days when this just doesn't work and it's all right. Like, keep in mind you guys are doing like a really really difficult degree it is completely okay if you to take a minute to just like treat yourself like i could pretend that i work multiple hours every day but i am also the same person who went to bed at 8 a.m like four days ago because i watched 16 episodes of 3k dramas like take a minute <laughs> to do whatever you want and then come back to it when you're refreshed if you're pushing yourself to work you won't be as efficient with it and you'll just be wasting your time genuinely yeah, and also this reflects remember this is the rest of your life well for most people medicine will eventually be a job that you do for at least like 40 years right and you need to get used to having a balance because like while i'm sure you'd be a brilliant like helpful to patients doctor if you did manage to like constantly study come back from your day at the hospital and learn some more diseases and like develop a new drug you're gonna burn out and you're not gonna have a good time and like real doctors come home and chill some days like you know and that's okay and like so long as you're putting in the work where you need to put in the work you also need to make sure that you need to remember that what am i trying to say part of it is looking after yourself in in one sentence part of all of this is making sure that you know you don't have like an absolute breakdown in like fifth year and you don't end up in a horrible place you don't end up isolated you don't end up you know, feeling like you hate medicine because you're just stressing yourself out constantly. And that's what me and I think everyone else has been trying to get across between me, Vera, 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 and like the big message between all these study skills is look after yourself, please. Like have fun, enjoy it. Remember that you're here to like enjoy it, get involved, talk to people. Um, 
Yeah, just to add to that, um, I started almost experienced burnout. I think I did probably burn out like last year in, in sort of around March. And I think um, I was trying to do too much and I was trying to get away, get way too ahead of myself. Um, and you know, I just took like a good week or two off um, just to not do anything, forget, um, forget that I was kind of, forget everything that was happening around me. And I think that was really beneficial for me. You need to take the time to yourself and you need to sort of take the time to reflect trying to push through and plot on when you, you you yourself aren't doing well isn't going to allow you to achieve what you want in the long term it's just going to like weigh you down um and as someone who has experienced it like that's something I've been trying to consciously do a lot more of this year um I do like actively try to integrate time just for myself um or I don't do anything um nothing to do with my phone nothing to do nothing to do with anything else nothing to do with studying because that's really allowed me to be a lot more consistent um, and being consistent is really key, I feel, in medical school. Like, you don't want to, like, have, like, really intense periods and then you go to complete nothingness. You want to, like, balance everything out really well. And honestly, first year is a trial year. Like, you're meant to use this year to, like, trial out all your new learning methods. Try try to, like, get your, find your feet in med school. You, like, shouldn't expect to kind of have everything sort of planned out and have, every, like, you shouldn't expect to um, sort of know how to cope with everything um like really early in first year um it's some it's something that I'm still working on um personally and um I don't know I feel like you need to really use the time to kind of experiment and find out what kind of balance works for you personally and I think that's a really good way to kind of ensure that you don't like crash and burn because it could be like people do crash and burn and it's not it's not it's not it's not nice um so yeah, I think that's something you should definitely try and integrate into your sort of routines and make it conscious. Don't be like, I think it's quite easy to kind of like say, oh, at the end of the day, I'll have one hour. And then like, whereas, oh, I've got there's this stuff I haven't managed to finish yet. And then just like ignore that time. And then you ignore that time the next day. And then you ignore that time the day after. And then you don't make yourself a priority anymore. Um, and I think constantly doing that, I feel like that's what I did in like March last year. Um, it wasn't good for me. Um, and I think you need to, you need to kind of, force yourself to have that time and don't see it as less important because it is more important for your long-term health and well-being um so yeah that's just something I'm... I totally want to second that like it's surprising how widespread like exhaustion and burnout is in medicine so like from now get good at realizing when you feel like you're tired and burnt out and take steps against it I remember like at least personally I'm very very extroverted I get quickly exhausted dealing with large groups of people. And around the beginning of this year, I like, I signed it like, up to tons of committees thinking it'd be a really good use of my time. And it totally has been, but like going from lockdown where I was like really enjoying like some alone time over the summer to suddenly like tons of meetings and lots of different people, it really, really like quickly stressed me out. Um, and I didn't notice until it, like, I'd been sleeping like 12 hours a day. I'm um, just cause I was tired to all hell. Um, so like, if you notice that happening, genuinely take some time out, you're like, message a personal tutor if you need to take some like whatever but continuing working will not do you any good at all um but yeah i'll like very very big shift but i'll shift on to the anatomy question definitely learn clinical relevance they will ask you questions on it possibly increasingly so now that exams are open book um like they can ask you they could ask you just what muscle is this but they can ask also ask you what's the action of this muscle what innovates it um what issue is this uh, what is this attached to um etc 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 um yeah. yeah in terms of apps like complete anatomy and stuff uh it's mixed i think diagrams are certainly useful because if you look at a real cadaver um they they're always complex and it can be hard to get like a base concept of what something really looks like without looking at a diagram first you will inevitably have to look at, di at like cadavers because you are tested with like cadaveric images um once you were able to do exams in person i'm not sure I wouldn't be surprised if your second year anatomy exam is like an MMI spotter. That was originally what it was meant to be. It's been made an online exam because of COVID, but originally it was meant to be like a, a rotation like thing where you go around and you look at different cadavers and you're like, what is this? Tell me about this. Um, so definitely learn that stuff. Those resources are genuinely useful. I think the way that I go through things is I use teach me anatomy first. And that's like pictures with like color code and whatever. And then I immediately watched the Atkins video that it was just talking about. And for me, like looking at a diagram first and then translating that into a cadaver is like, that works for me. Um, but again, like there's a, a returning theme of whatever works for you, works for you. 
Yeah, I would say one thing that complete anatomy lets you do that um, cataract images don't is, like, for example, I was, like, confused about the lobes of the liver, and obviously I can't pick up a liver, and looking at various camera angles doesn't really help. What complete anatomy does is a 3D app, so I could look at a virtual liver, I could spin it around, look at it upside down, and I could orient myself, and I think that's the kind of thing that these, those apps give you, is the control, like, for example, you can look at the brachial plexus as a floating bunch of lines and really get used to how to merge and split and like watching an Ackland video you see all of that in the space of two minutes and it's not enough time for you to like you can't pick it up and move it around and unless you have a cadaver which is questionable and also probably legal um you don't really have access to a brachial plexus which you can pick up and move around um so I think that's what those apps are really helpful for um but yeah, does anyone else have other questions? I like how it also varied into like a well-being advice talk. I think three of us have been on the well-being network team at some point or are involved. Yeah. I was actually going to say I was going to get onto the well-being part now and I'm happy for anyone to interject as well. But I've got a little slide with a few animations. So basically an exam is very, very easy to start feeling a bit like this person in the picture. Um, but it's very important that we don't feel this way. So your exams, your results do not equal you. They don't define you as a person. And that's something that I think is very important to remember. And I think that's been emphasized so many times already today. Um, and then in order to stay healthy, I've just got a few ideas of things that you can do. So the first thing to do is talk. Like if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling burnt out, if you're feeling any type of way, it's very, very important that you communicate with people, uh, whether that's friends, family, if it's gonna be welfare and FEO, please do talk to them. Uh, secondly, is just trying to stay fit and healthy. As we've all learned from LMAP, it's very important that we try and stay somewhat physically active. I've been very bad at this recently. I'm trying to do a little bit of exercise. And for me, that's roller skating. Do whatever you can, even if you know it's not stereotypical exercise. Eat healthily and try and get somewhat a decent sleep schedule. Get however many hours you need. I know it varies for everyone, but try and sleep. Um, once again, asking for help. So that can be to older years, asking friends. It's just important that you try and work with people. If that's making study groups or whatever works best for you, it's always worth contacting other people. Uh, don't see it as a competition. Don't try and compete with people. Just try and you know, get on with everyone and work together. And then this slide is just uh, about welfare support please, please use it. I know a lot of people feel like they can't sometimes, but your tutors are there to talk to you about revision strategies as well. Um, also for managing stress and work-life balance. You can apply for mitigating circumstances. If you haven't contacted FEO about exam arrangements, please do. Um, and also um, Annabelle, so Dr. Varela Carver, she is really, really lovely. I've spoken to her on many occasions and she's our senior tutor. So if you're having any complex personal concerns, please, please send her an email. And if you're ever unsure, please email FEO. And you can also send me a message on WhatsApp and I can direct you to whatever re resource that you feel like you might want to use. But yeah, that's basically all I have to say. And I don't know if anyone wants to add now. Um, I'd say that um, I, I'm sure um, Lilia can guide you guys to this, but um, the uni also offers free counselling if you feel like you need that. Um, it is like all other counselling unrelated to your studies. Um, they're not going to be like, you're not going to have like James Peace listening to you. It's going to be like an actual counsellor. Um, and it'll be anonymous. Uh, sorry, it'll be like confidential within like, normal reason um and yeah you get I think you get like the first where you can like meet them and talk to them and then you get five sessions from there so that can be really helpful also like if you're ever in a really bad situation if you call 116123 that's the samaritans number um and they're just someone who's there to listen to you like if you're going through the shit like there's that as well i know it's harder for you guys because you may not necessarily have as close uni friends obviously i'm sure some of you do and um 
but I, I know that for me it would have been much harder to meet the people I'm close to um, had I not been in real life. Like my closest friends, I met them at events. Um, and while I do love the people in my tutor group, um, like I don't know if I if I'm going through this shit, I wouldn't really be talking to them. So I do get that it might be difficult for you guys. So do know there are people out there. In terms of study groups also, like I know it can be difficult to reach out to people if you do need help. So I just want to offer myself up. Like I'm sure a lot of you guys know me because I was like talking endlessly on the group chat over the summer. Um, but I am still on the like WhatsApp group. Feel free to drop me messages if you guys like are going through stuff. If like Lily is busy, but I know Lily is lovely um, and you just want like a casual chat. If you need any like advice and stuff, me, Ryan and Varia are still collecting medic children. Um, so like, feel free. We do like occasional socials too. So, you know, hey, Yasmin, we recently collected as well. So <laughs> yeah, we have like 20 kids. It's a fun little group. So definitely like, like always things. And I'm sure there are, we're not unique in this aspect. Like I know Viraj is lovely. Like it sucks. I didn't get to talk to him that much before uni went into lockdown. I feel like I, I got to know Viraj a bit more at the end of term two. So like, and he he's great. And like, there are loads of really amazing people. Adrija's lovely. I met her once or twice in, in the real world back in the day. But yeah, um, reach out to people, talk to people. And I was also say, don't be afraid to just pop up. Like, remember like you are still first year. Everyone's kind of a bit shy and a bit new. If you think someone's cool, tell them, like say hi. It's what you do in real life. You'd be like, hey, nice jacket. That's how I met Varia. Hey, nice jacket. Um, and now we're best friends. So, you know, feel free to do that. Remember, you can do that. And like, stay good. This is a really, really good page. Make sure you read it. Yeah, this is the new holding slide that we've been working to make with Fran. So with welfare. And I think it will probably start showing up a bit more during lectures. So please take a look. This has got loads of useful information on it. Um, and if you do need information, I'm happy to outsource and refer you to whatever you need. So, yeah. I think we're done for the day. Um, I tell you what, actually, just before that, because um, someone asked, let me just explain what I was talking about earlier, because I realized I like flipped through it and I didn't explain. Um, so uh, do you mind if I share my screen? Uh, so when I was talking about anatomy earlier and like what I use, uh, what I meant was, was whenever I am like looking for something in anatomy, I go to Teach Me Anatomy, which is this website. Um, like this is what it helped me with the most was Anterior Forum because there are so many of these and I, it took me hours to get this. Um, so it's all like color coded and then I can like properly divide them in my head on what they should look like. And then there are some cadaveric images here. Acklands, you guys should have links to this in, in Sendy, I think. Um, but you can log in there. There's like a video um, a couple of students made that uh, explains how to log in and stuff. But there are like small videos here that like have actual cadaveric, um, oh, that's a shame, uh, actual cadaveric specimens. It was made like a really long time ago, um, but it, it goes through literally everything in the entire course. Um, I like when I was revising anatomy, I just been to this. I didn't even look at Incendi because um, this is superior in all honesty. Um, but yeah. On this, they also have questions. If you Could you scroll up for a second? Um, if you click sign in in the top right corner, um, then you can, you log in via Shibleth but with your university as normal. And then you can also, after you, so this is step one, log in with Imperial. Once you've logged in with Imperial and all of this, then you can, uh, I believe, log in again. So log into my personal account uh, in the middle of the page. And oh, then, I have a account. yeah, and then you make an account, sign up now after you've logged in from Imperial, and you can then use these questions. And they're based off the video. And the best part about it is, um, once you've gone into the marking part of the question, there are about 60 for each section, they then show you the exact second of the exact video in which he explains it and talks about it. So like for me, if you're like me and you're like, I have no idea what I was looking at, you can then rewatch that like 10 seconds of the video and it'll guide you through it. But yeah, brilliant resource. Um, again, like, yeah, loads yeah. of meaty videos. It's really exciting. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, so I guess we're finishing up and I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for attending. And also thank you very much to our older years for coming on and taking their free time to do this. Um, it, I think it's been really, really useful. Oh, uh, I think we've got another question. Does it cover our anatomy course? It covers, that's a, that's a good point actually. 
it covers more than the anatomy course. Something you need to get comfortable with is that when you look stuff up, there will be more information than you need. Um, at this point, I have like gotten so used to looking stuff up that I kind of like automatically just skim past stuff that I know I don't need to know. Um, but I guess when you start out, um, like Viraj said, you can like start using a ton of stuff and it will give you like tons of info. And you might feel a little overwhelmed because there's just so much that it's like almost insane. Like I, th I thought this was meant to help me. Like now I have even more to learn. Um, so again, like as with everything, take it gradually um, and like use whatever you think is useful and then you can start expanding and finding more stuff. Yeah, um, the, for the different, like uh, the definitive, what do I need to know comes from your, the uni provided resources. Um, Cause they can only test you on things they've directly pointed you to. So that's why I would like skim, if, even if I don't understand, I'd look through the, like whatever reading they give us for anatomy. Um, and then I know kind of like what they expect. Me to know. And then from there I go into revision resources. So like, I, I think I looked through the original anatomy stuff when we were learning it. And then I only revised using like Acklands and that other book kind of like labeling things as don't need to know. And then if I see the name I didn't need to know, I'm like, crap, that's wrong. But filtering through it. But yeah, don't overwhelm yourself. We've given you a lot of stuff. I would say if you try and use everything, 